He started off his championship run at 105 pounds, won at 108, 112, and most recently won a title in December of 2008 as the WBO Junior Bantamweight Champion, but then vacated the belt when he didn't agree to a mandated fight that was coming up against a, Phil, a fellow Filipino. His desire is to be in against the best of the division. We know who that is. That is Estrada and Chocolatito and, of course, Sorun Savai. Nietes is a seasoned veteran. When you look at him, you may not see a lot that jumps off at the screen at you, but he is crafty for a division world champion, and he's very efficient, very economical with his movements, with his punches, and he does just enough to get the job done. But for a fighter like me, I respect and have a lot of, uh, just a lot of admiration for a fighter like this and, and his longevity in the sport. It's our co-feature, scheduled for 10, before we get to the world title fight of Herring and Frampton. Fanless atmosphere here at Caesars Palace Blue Waters. It's a massive entertainment facility, but they have built this bubble. It's like an igloo, the rotunda, they call it, right on the shore, looking back at the city of Dubai. Carrillo is a 10-year pro, style. a veteran at 115 pounds. He's fought mostly in his native Colombia. 26 times he has fought in Colombia. 25-7 and 1 mark. Carrillo has, excuse me, uh, Nietes has that perfect style, especially if you're a little bit older fighter and you don't have the spring in your legs and the energy that you want to have in your 20s and 30s, just being economical and allowing your brain to get you through even more so than your physical body. You know, one of the valuable things in boxing is to know where your opponent comes from. And Correo, he, he comes from Colombia. And the thing that comes to my mind, you know, in knowing different countries and styles is, is punching power. You know, you can see the big, how big his legs are. You can see him trying to sit down on that right hand. You know, he has knockout punching power. Forty-two wins over his career. Thirty-eight years old. Twenty-three knockouts. Four. And um, you know, they looking for knockouts. They love the action. Round two scheduled for 10. Julio Paras is our referee in Dubai. Nantes hasn't lost a bout since 2004. Coming off a long playoff of two years and three months, but undefeated in his last 35 fights, spanning four divisions. Vacated the IVF flyweight title that he won in April of 2017, and then did the same with the WBO Junior Bantamweight title. Sometimes, Joe, for an older fighter, a layoff can be problematic, but sometimes it's just an opportunity to rest those older bones, those muscles, especially if that older fighter stays in shape and is constantly working. Sometimes that layoff can be good and it's not always a bad thing. I'm going to find out yeah, that answer one of the, here. One of the things that you don't test, one of the things that you, as an older fighter, you have a lot of experience. Yetes has a ton of experience and you can see how savvy he is in that ring, you know, setting up the younger fighter in Corralio. Rio trying to get that one two going, but easily blocked from Nietes. 
Nice uppercut right there from Nietes. Carrillo, he, he sits down on that right hand. He's looking for the right hand constantly. That's his power shot. He either throws it straight and sometimes he loops the shot as well. Carrillo himself coming off of the layoff in 20 mm. months. Last fight was August of 2019. Coming to the end of round number two here. Four division champ Nietes against Carrillo, and then we lead to our junior lightweight world champ world champion. And you know, we've already talked about it earlier, and we're gonna get into this more in our lead up to the main event, but there is so much to unwrap when it comes to how you view that fight, whether it's the strategy, whether it's the size, or Timmy even getting into the time zone change of this fight or adapting to the heat. This fight taking place in Dubai. That's 10 time zone difference from where Herring trained in Colorado. And Frampton got to Dubai on March 16th, so he had over two and a half weeks to acclimate. And Herring got there last weekend. Yeah, I'm not too worried about the, the whole acclimation point. A week, I think, is, is long enough. I understand that Frampton got there a little bit sooner, and he could feel a little bit more comfortable with the time change or the time zone, but the, a fight is a fight. It doesn't matter. It's going to go on in the ring, and both guys need to go out there and put it out on the line. Round three here between Nietes and Carrillo. In that last round, both men threw 34 punches. Rio landing nine, Nietes landing eight. So what you want to do if you're a veteran like Nietes is you want to have the younger, eager fighter just guessing. And Nietes is doing just enough to feint, keep the younger fighter off balance, not let him feel confident to throw that big right hand. He throws it, Nietes counters him, disciplines him. This is the ideal first two and a half rounds for Nietzsche. And if you're Carrillo, you can't play that game. You have to press the envelope when you want to press the envelope and rest when you want to rest. You can't play the old Mongoose's game because he'll lose that one. Well, it's very interesting. Nietzsche's you know, is having his way early. I would think that Carrillo would have his way early and Nietes would have more of his opportunity later in this fight. But that's not the case right now. So things are looking pretty badly for Carrillo right now. Those are good shots right there from Rio. See that half step back right there from Nietes? It's hard to catch that if you're at home, but that, that's a lot. That keeps a strong fighter like Carrillo guessing. And of the first three division champion ever, from the Irish Isle. Copy box punches tally this way, a 28 to 22 advantage for Nietes as we begin round number four. Look, Mark, I went over to England. I didn't get acclimated. I came, I went there actually a week before the fight and I slept during the day <laughs> and I stayed up all night. I didn't get acclimated and I was fine the night of my fight in my championship fight against Junior Witter, so all this acclimation stuff or whatever you guys are talking about, I, man, listen to me. A fight is a fight, period. Doesn't matter what time it is. It's very important for Carrillo right now to step up the tempo. That's what you need to do against Nietes. He's a vet. Step up the tempo. Make him fight at a higher pace. 
so that way you can wear them down. Yeah, because right now Carrillo's trying to play chess with a master chess player. Yeah, you don't want to do that against a, a boxer like Nietzsche. You want to press the issue. Make him make decisions and choices quickly. Wear the legs down. Beat on the body. And on the inside, a two-punch combination from the Yetes, and Carrillo immediately fires back. Give him a little fly from that from right hand. Sides. And Tim, I think Carrillo needs to pick up that punch he just threw right there, not the right hand, but the jab, in order to let both hands go and then pick up the pace, just like you said. That'll at least give him a half a second to blind the edge to let those shots go. To this point, he's thrown 70 jabs, and he's landed 10. To your point, Dre, not only does he need to throw that jab to the head, he also needs to change levels with it and drop Drop it downstairs if he wants to catch Nietes with that looping right hand that he's been looking for all night. Interesting to hear Frampton, how he frames things. And he talks about he revels in the support back home. This is a global broadcast that is on free broadcast TV back in the UK. It's airing on Channel 5. So in Belfast, all over Britain, throughout the Irish Isle, they are all awaiting to see if Frampton can make history. No Irishman has become a three-division world champion. He's one of seven from Northern Ireland to win what is a widely recognized boxing world championship. And here he is now, having first won a championship at 122 pounds, trying to do so at 130 pounds. Herring's five foot ten. Frampton is five foot five, and of course Herring has the reach advantage as well, and that'll be something we focus in on right from the start in our world title fight that is coming up right after this co-feature between Nietes and Carrillo. Nice spin out right there from Nietes. He was trapped in the corner and Carrillo made an attempt to attack and Nietes just made a smooth move to the left and brought the fight back to the center of the ring. Comes with a one-two, utilizing the jab. He's been able to block that right hand of Carrillo. You know, Carrillo just does just enough to just compete. He don't do enough to win a fight. You know, the fight is here for him to win. You know, and I think that's been his issue. That's the reason why he accumulated so many losses. Good right hand right there by Nietes. I just don't want to put the burden on Carrillo to jab more. I think Nietes can also jab more. He's very economical, like we've been saying. He likes to throw hard shots when he feels like he has you hurt or when he has a clean opening, but he can also have more success offensively if he uses more of the left hand. I think sooner or later, Nietes is going to realize that Carrillo, he doesn't fight well going backwards. Anytime he will put pressure on him and throw combinations, you know, Carrillo gets himself out of position. Good hook right there by That's Carrillo. From Carrillo. Gets himself a little bit out of position. Well, that's what you wanted to see more of, Tim, and Carrillo just gave you a glimpse of a lead left hook as we come to the end of round number five. Do want to show you what happened earlier as we begin round number six. Come on, 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 come on,
28 to 24 power punch edge as well, landing 36% of his power punches as the four division world champion. That first title was won back in 2007. 105 pounds he won. <laughs> You might ask how is how are some fighters able to fight late it late in their careers as their age continues to increase and some aren't and I would say fundamentals 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 Nietes always has his hands in position even when he ducks down you'll see him have that left guard above where his temple is and protecting his chin looking over the guard trying to look for a shot his feet are always in the right position and when you have good fundamentals and great fundamentals you can go deep into a career, whereas a fighter who doesn't, who just depends on athleticism and speed and power, they tend to fall off the quick cliff and fall off rather quickly. It also depends on the fighting style as well. As you can see, Nietes, he's more of a boxer, counterpuncher style as well. If he's more of an aggressive fighter, then his years could be shortened. I think he's aggressive in spots, Tim. I think he's right in yeah. front of you, but he's just crafty when he's in front of you. And I don't think 38 is, is really old. You know, I'm, I'm 37. I'll be 38 this year. And, and mentally, I feel like I can do it. But physically, my body will not hold up. So I think it has a lot to do with your body as well. You know, how much you take care of your body outside of the ring and also during your training camp. Well, if the big buzz in boxing holds up and comes to fruition with signed contracts, we're going to be talking about another Filipino when it comes to how much age is a factor, and that is Manny Pacquiao at 42 years old. Uh, so many reports this week of the talks of a Pacquiao-Crawford welterweight showdown. That would be June 5th, about an hour away from where the fights are coming to you today. That would be in Abu Dhabi. We'll see if that comes to fruition. Tess, anytime you say the name Manny Pacquiao, I don't think about age. Manny you think Pacquiao about Rolex, Tim. Yeah. You think about Rolex is what you think hey, about. <laughs> <laughs> and no, many Tesla. <laughs> many Tesla. <laughs> no, I, I just think age is not a factor. That guy is special. He's a special fighter. Well, this would be the ultimate test to find out how special Pacquiao is as his fellow countrymen is in control here coming to the end of round number six. Nietes in control against Carrillo, but the Rockets proper career, this is what he needs. He needs this type of recognition, the notoriety. If he can beat a guy, a legend like Manny Pacquiao, then without question, he's the man. Dre, obviously everybody wants to see an Errol Spence fight, but in listening to the two fighters recently, uh, you know, there's little hope that we get that in the near future. We can hope. As big of a fight as that would be, and that would be one of the biggest, if not the biggest, fight that you could make in boxing, one of the biggest events that the sport can produce would actually be this, Pacquiao Crawford. There's a big difference between a great match, a great bout, and a big event. This would be a big event. Of course. I mean, again, because Manny Pacquiao is associated with it, and you have my pound for pound number one fighter in the world associated with it. So, of course, it's going to be a big matchup. And boxing is just strange like that. Like, I, I, for whatever reason, we're not getting Spence Crawford, but if Errol Spence wins another title against Ugas and he's got three out of the four belts, and Terrence Crawford takes care of business against Manny Pacquiao, all of a sudden that fight's going to seem a lot more doable than it is right now. Yeah, coincidentally, that title that Ugas would have is because the WBA has put Pacquiao as the champion in recess. If you want to follow along all the plot twists of the Alphabet Soup organizations. Round seven here, halfway through, Nantes has been controlling things, the four-division world champion who is coming off a long layoff. Last fight was December of 2018. Won the vacant WBO Junior Bantamweight World Championship then. Had a 12-round split decision against Kazuto Ioka. 17-year pro, very popular among the Filipino fight fans. This is his first fight in the Middle East. 37 times he has headlined as the main event fighter. It's a right hand from the former champ. 37 times back over the Philippines, he has been the main event fighter. 
Remember, at the end of this 10-round co-feature, we will get right to the world championship fight between Carl Frampton and Jamel Herring. Wide sweeping left hand just off the mark. I knew sooner or later, Nietzsche is going to realize that Carrillo can't fight well going backwards. He's pressuring now. Here, Jesse Porras Piata in the corner of Carrillo encouraging him to do it like that and like that. That he wants. Last time we saw Herring was against Jonathan Akendo. That was back in September, won by DQ, but the way he finished up that night created a lot of questions as to what we will see tonight. He's dealt with so much recently. Everybody's had to lay off in the sport, but then COVID positive. And then the delays to this world championship fight. And the wait is over. Frampton and Herring just moments away. You saw Nietes open up with both hands and be more aggressive than we've seen in this whole fight, and that's what he does. He's sort of like a knuckleballer in baseball. He'll just keep chipping away, a little bit here, a little bit there, and when he lands that shot, you'll see him open up and try to finish the show. He couldn't do it against Carrillo, credit to him, but you better believe that Nietes is looking for that big shot once again in these next two and a half rounds. One of the shots that he's looking for, Dre, is the left hook. You know, I see him oh, a couple uppercut. of times last round. Beautiful uppercut. See, the uppercut is a dangerous shot because it comes from the bottom up. You don't see it. You know, you're used to seeing hooks coming around and right hands coming around, but you just don't see the uppercut come right up the middle. Mm. But Carrillo's game. <laughs> nice three piece from the Eti. Yeah, Grayo. Grayo was just walking straight forward. And yet they just met him with punches. It's good positioning inside from Nietes. He gets hit with the shot. He makes the adjustment. He rolls to the side. He rolls back. Hands are in position, and he's looking for a shot. He didn't have one, so he resets. Beautiful, beautiful sequence, even though he got hit with the punch. And then a three-punch combination on the inside. Because good upper body movement, even at close range, for a division world champion. And the bait was six more inside. And I'm, I assure you that Bo Mack has went over in the gym with Jamel Herring over and over about how to defend against anybody attacking with their head. So I'm not really worried about the. I'm not really worried about it tonight, uh, Tess, at all. I think he's going to be just fine. I think he's going to find the proper distance to face Jamel Herring, and uh, I mean, excuse me, face uh, Carl Frampton, and I think he he does well tonight. Good, 
I think Nietzsche's has pretty much tamed Carrillo to fight the fight that he wanted to fight. In fact, I think it's been that way the whole way through. But I think it's very, very evident right now that Carrillo is tamed. He's a very tough fighter, so he's going to keep throwing. But good shot from Nietzsche. I don't see Carrillo trying to land shots that, that he's setting up. He's just sort of surviving. In from the opening bell, Dre. Carrillo's just been, you know, fighting at this pace outside. I mean, I, I think it's his game plan. His game plan just stinks tonight, you know. That's not the game plan I would come in against an older fighter, a veteran fighter, and the Yetes. That right there is what game plan I would come in. With. Smother him, get close, beat on him anywhere you can. Slow this man down. Don't give him any chances to think. That right uppercut again from the edges. Very sneaky. Now Carrillo's getting real aggressive, and he's leaning just a tad bit over the front knee. That's why you're seeing Nietes looking for the uppercut. You know, he's a veteran. ESPN that night. Tenth and final round here between Nietes and Korea. I mean, I heard about touching gloves, and, you know, I've seen it, and I've done it in the last round as well, but a hug and all that stuff, that's a lot of respect <laughs> for one another right now, man. Sounds like a little too much Jeez, respect for you, Tim. A little Pace too picked much up respect. here from yes. Carrillo. And that's what happens when you're facing a master. And all of a sudden you realize that you've been taken to school, you've been taught, you've been educated. You can't do anything but give respect, and that's what <laughs> that's what Carrillo's doing right now. <laughs> it's a different type of beating. You know, some would say, oh, that's too strong of a word, but is it really? When you have a fighter in Miete who's taken away your greatest strength, but he exploits all your weaknesses, mm. and he's not fighting the way he looks on paper. He's not fighting his age. Or he's not fighting, you know, the amount of miles that he has on his odometer. He, he just seems to fight younger, smoother, sharper, and he's smarter than what one may think. And that's what Carrillo has, has, you know, understood the hard way in this fight. That's experience. That's great timing by the former champion, Yetes. Nietes wins more fights with his brains, his IQ, and his experience than he does any physical gift that he has. And I never wanted to get to this point. I always wanted to keep the IQ and the physical gifts in line together. But it's a beautiful thing to see a fighter go late in age when they can still control a younger man like this. You know who was really good at that, Drake, was Bernard Hopkins. He was great at that. Yeah. He beat everybody with his mind. That's why he stayed in the business a long time. Donnie Nieto knows how to swim without getting wet. He does a little bit of everything, right, Dre? A little bit of everything. He can come forward. He's boxing from the outside off the back foot. Stepping to the side, stepping around, going down to the body. I like what I'm seeing from him. Timing a right hand there. The key is in the eyes from Yetes. He's just always looking at the target. Even in the midst of being under fire, his eyes are always locked in on the target. Never out of position or rarely out of position. Mm. 